Hello and welcome to another example video about electromagnetic in induction. In this video, we are going to look at how uh, oscillation, for example, a pretty straightforward simple harmonic oscillation of a magnet bar on a spring, like so. So that you can see there is a magnet bar here. This is your magnet bar. All right. It's probably going to oscillate up and down. Okay. So, uh, Let's read the question. The bar magnet is suspended above the free end of a helical spring, so just a regular good old spring, as illustrated in figure 3.1. One pole of the magnet is situated in the coil of the wire, so the magnet is kind of like partially already inside the wire. The coils, so these are your coils here, okay? The coils are connected in series with the switch and the resistor. And initially, the switch is open. So when the switch is open, right, this loop, this circuit, the loops, and coming back like this, this circuit is not complete. So there's no way current can flow. All right. So the magnet is then uh, displaced vertically and released. Sure. As the magnet passes through, its rest position, a timer is started. Okay. The variation with time t and the vertical displacement y from the magnet, from its rest position, is shown in figure 3.2. So you may be wondering where the rest position is. Um, I'll draw it for you. The diagram on top shows you where the rest position is, which is here. Okay, so what we can do is we could take maybe a reference point. So I guess outside the coil is easier to see. So here is the rest position. So this means, right, when we draw this graph, or because this magnet is going to oscillate up and down, so we will just track the position of this reference point. So we start from here, it will oscillate up and down, up and down, up and down. All right, so here is our graph. Of course, I'm going to stay at this graph. Okay. So at four seconds, the switch is closed. So notice that after this four seconds, the amplitude begins to decrease. See, the amplitude was fairly constant all the way here. And then right after four seconds, the amplitude will drop. Drop, 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 drop. Okay, so I probably, if you've already learned chapter 13, oscillation, you will recognize that this is a form of damping or the uh, oscillation is losing energy. All right, let us read the question further. A, part one. State the evidence for the magnet to be undergoing free oscillations uh, during the period from 0 to 4 seconds. Well, uh, number 1, the amplitude is constant and the frequency is constant. So we could say the both amplitudes and frequencies is constant. Or the same or doesn't change. Amplitude. Alright, so this free oscillation is this is the definition. Amplitude and frequency is constant. It doesn't change. State with reason whether the damping after 4 seconds is light, critical or heavy. This is obviously light damping because the uh, amplitude of the oscillation decreases gradually. So light damping. Okay. This is because the amplitude of oscillation decreases gradually over time or exponentially over time but decreases gradually is a better phrase lah, for this description all right determine the natural frequency of vibration of the magnet so to find the frequency this natural frequency happens during free oscillation so i guess i could look for the period but I first need to go and stare at the graph for a bit. So if you look at this, right, it's pretty obvious that one period is uh, four boxes. 
Okay, but if you're feeling insecure, you can take multiple periods. Meaning here is one, here is two, here is three, here is four, here is five. Okay, so five complete cycles is 4.0 second. Okay, it's pretty obvious that this one passes through here. Lah. All right, so you could, I presume, just write 5t is 4.0 second. So you could find your t as 0 0.8 second. So hence, frequency is 1 over t, 1 over 0 0.8, that will be 0 0.125 hertz. 0 0.125, sorry, 1.25. All right. So this question, right, you kind of like have to relate back to oscillation. Ah. So essentially, part A is all about chapter 13. Okay. But part B is already electromagnetic induction. So B part one, here is how you know it's electromagnetic induction because they will hint at you. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So this one is pretty standard. Induce EMF or induce current in a closed loop. Miss got closed loop man. Coil is a closed loop law. Coil is a large closed loop that we shorten by rotating it around the toilet paper roll. Okay. So induce EMF in a closed loop or a closed conductor, I guess. Conducting loop is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Okay, so basically what we're writing is induced EMF E is proportional to d flux dt or d psi d phi dt. All right. Explain. Wow, miss this chapter. Plenty, many. Explain. Ah. Yes, you are right. So if you don't know how to explain, it will be a bit stressful for you. Lah. But the thing about this Faraday's law explanation, while the situation can be quite can be quite new, like you never see before, but the explanation format, very much like your paper 5, can be fixed. So if we want to use Faraday's law, we need to first identify the change in flux. So these are my suggested steps or method. Okay, so I have a few steps here. Step one, identify what causes the change in flux. So in this case, it will be pretty obvious. La, it is the oscillating magnet. So you could say when the magnet moves in the coil, there's a change in flux. Right? Step two, you will then relate to Faraday, meaning here you will have an induced EMF or current. If we have an induced EMF or current, you will now have uh, two branches. Law. You could either talk about lens, if here they ask you to describe direction. Direction of current inside the coil. And because of this, maybe direction of force. So this one we'll probably do in a different example because they didn't ask us to talk about force. But another way that we can go is to go on the uh, energy conservation of energy route. Okay, so for this energy, you could say that, hey, there is some other energy, normally uh, kinetic or combination of kinetic and potential, I will call this mechanical, la, which is Ke and maybe Pe. It will convert to electrical energy. That's why we call this induced EMF. And of course, eventually, it will become heat or thermal energy dissipated. Okay. So the induced EMF, electrical energy. Or induced EMF will cause a force to act on the conductor. All right. So where we go very much depends on the question and what you're trying to explain. So in this case, uh, how we know what to explain uh, is a little bit of hint up here. Uh, 
they say damping. Okay, damping here implies that there is a loss in energy. So we probably can go on the. Let's explain why it's happening here. Why the amplitude decrease? So this decrease in amplitude means there's a decrease in energy. So we need to explain why. Alright, so we're going to start first. Start by the first step, identifying the change in flux. What causes a change in flux? So I could say as the magnet moves in the coil. Next, the magnet bar moves in the coil. The magnetic flux linkage inside the coil changes. So the key term here is flux linkage changes. Period. From our good friend Faraday, from Faraday's law, and EMF will be induced inside the coil. All right, so EMF induced inside the coil to oppose the changes in flux. All right, you can add this in now to flex a bit. All right, so let's move on to the second point. What would the second point be? We are not, we are not going to talk about lens. We will talk about conservation of energy. Okay, so you could say something along the lines that this current, this induced EMF, and hence induced current in the coil causes the resistor, don't forget, the coil was connected to a resistor here. So this resistor will become hot now. R. Okay. So this induce, the induced current in the coil causes the resistor to heat up. Or become hot. Okay, and finally, you talk about the energy conversion to heat up and become hot. So, this heat energy was transferred from the electrical energy which was from the energy of oscillation. Of the magnet. Okay, and then you can say something along the line where hence amplitude decreases. Decreases with the energy of oscillation. So normally this kind of explanation is four to five marks. All right. So the first mark I will highlight in yellow for you would be magnetic flux linkage changes. It would be better for you if you explain what causes the change. All right, because you have to be specific and relate. So something like the bar moving in the coil, the magnetic flux changes. Okay, so this is one mark. It's going to write here. One mark. From Faraday's law, the EMF 
will be induced inside the coil. One mark. So you can just mention, oh, this movement happened. Oscillation happened inside the coil. As the magnet oscillates inside the coil, the magnetic flux linkage will change. Step one, identify the change in flux. Step two, tell the tell the examiner or tell the reader in the question that because of this change in flux, EMF will be induced. Okay? And next, this induced EMF will have current in the coil causing the resistor to heat up. Or maybe current in the resistor. Lah. All right, so current in the coil causes resistor to heat up. So this will be the third mark. And the final mark is when there is a mention about how this heat energy is from electrical energy, which is from energy of oscillation. Of course, you could write the sentence in a reverse order. La. You could say the energy of oscillation was, is converted to the electrical energy, which is converted to the heat energy in the resistor. Hence, the energy of oscillation decreases. And because of this, the amplitude will decrease together. This one is not uh, written in the mark scheme, but I add, it's, I add this here to round up the question. Because the story that I'm trying to tell is as the magnet moves in the coil, we have EMF. Because got EMF, we got current. Because we got current, the resistor become hot. Where did this heat energy come from? It came from the oscillation. Because we started off the story as because the magnet oscillate. So then you remind and reaffirm the point that this heat energy came from the energy of oscillation, which was converted to electrical energy, which was then converted to heat. Hence, the energy of oscillation will become smaller. Hence, the amplitude will decrease. Okay, so this one is a skill that you got to practice. So just have this in mind. Make sure you cover all the points. Identify the change. Relate it to Faraday. Say that there's current. And because of this current, two things will happen. Uh, the system might experience a force to slow it down. Okay, which is, hope, which is covered inside the theory video. Or the system will have an energy conversion, causing it to lose energy. They both happen at the same time. Okay, so depending on uh, the requirements of the question, you will explain it accordingly. So this kind of explanation is uh, generally about four to five marks. All right, and could even be a double case explanation for the single sitting. Okay, so if you find this helpful, once again, like and subscribe. Share this with your friend. Let's ace A2 together and I will see you in the next one. Next video. Take care, take care. Bye-bye.